Welcome to week three. Our focus this week is on group work, specifically how to design and support effective group work online. I think it's important to distinguish between these two aspects, designing and supporting. We're particularly interested in how group work works online, and we think this is a key issue for a lot of online course design. The work you do this week is also a resource to draw on for the final assessment if you're taking the course for credit. So as usual, there's a lot going on. There's a bunch of reading to do, and as usual, we highlight the one key reading that you really should do this week. Because we think that theoretical frameworks are important to understanding and analysing educational problems and contexts, and because we think you've probably already engaged with Salmon's five-stage model, this week we urge you to look at a different framework, the Communities of Inquiry model. Specifically, you might find it useful to think about this as the aspect of this model known as social presence. That said, we're pointing you to a number of easily digestible practical resources this week, and I would urge you to do more than just minimal reading, because this is a very complex topic, and a week is a very short time to explore it. As well, and as usual, there are a series of activities to do, three in fact, this week. The small group task carries on from week two. By now, you should know the other members of your group pretty well, and be ready to start on producing your group artefact if you haven't already. This is the badge activity for this week, and it's an experiential learning task. We want you to reflect on your experience of working in a small group, standing back from the experience and thinking about the things you would need as a student in order to make this a fulfilling, engaging and well-supported task. What do you think about the differences between doing group work in more traditional face-to-face -face ways and working entirely online? What's the role of the technology mediating the various group processes? What sorts of technologies are the best ones to use for certain kinds of tasks? And how do we support students in making good choices about the technologies they use to do in their group tasks? Successful group work is underpinned by good design, well-formulated, challenging tasks for students to do, clarity about why group work is important for the task and how the task itself relates to the learning outcomes of the course, clearly specified outputs, realistic timeframes, effective group size and competition for the task. We hope you'll consider aspects of design in your small group task. The research is pretty clear that the significant problem with group work is usually around group assessment. We're going to focus in a bit more detail on group assessment, or at least peer assessment of group work, in week five. In the meantime, there's a useful leaflet about group work assessment that I would recommend to you in the readings for this week. We can't just put off thinking about the assessment of group work until week five, because the assessment of group work is integral to the design of good group tasks. No matter how good the design, group work needs to be supported. Our week two readings included some on group development and team roles, so if you didn't read them then, you might want to go back to them now and think about how these issues affect your own group work and what they suggest about ways of supporting students in your own context. Tasks two and three are intended to help you draw out some of the issues in the design of group work and complex questions about how we best support it. Remember that both of these tasks are themselves online learning activities, so they lend themselves to your analysis and critique. Task 2 is a fairly bog-standard discussion forum, while Task 3 is for those of you more inclined to the short, sharp, compressed interactions on Twitter. In both cases, the educational rationale is analysing good practice about group work by trying to consider a range of experiences and therefore possible educational scenarios. To get the most out of this week, you might consider blogging about it. You're probably going to come across lots of things that are important and useful, and there's nothing quite like synthesising them all in one place to bring all that together. I hope you enjoy the week.